Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Trent uh, Webinar Advantage. Uh, tonight we're talking about social work, and I'm here with Professor, Doctor, Director Susan <laughs> Hillock, lots of different titles that she has. Um, so again, my name is Jennifer Walsh Hopkins. I'm an enrollment advisor here at the university, and I'm going to be moderating the webinar tonight. Um, just a, a kind of a few things of how it's going to work. Um, we're going to switch momentarily to um, Dr. Hillock's presentation, uh, but if you do have any questions, feel free to be typing them into the chat. I will be looking at that through the, the presentation, and then at the end of the presentation, we'll get to your questions. Um, so really, without uh, further ado, I'm going to pass it off to you, Dr. Hillock, um, and your presentation. Thanks, Jennifer. Hi, so I want to talk a little bit uh, and offer like a broad overview of the program and really highlight uh, some of the main areas that students usually have questions um, about the program. So I want to talk a little bit about what social work is. Uh, students often have questions about what is social work. And in social work, what we do is we provide essential supports to lots of communities. We help individuals, groups, and families meet their basic human needs, so food, shelter, security, safety. But we also work at uh, trying to make the world a better place. So we try to create the conditions for social justice, social change, and equality. Um, our BSW program um, prepares graduates to have the knowledge and skills to work in a general, uh, a broad range of general social work uh, context. And we also provide a very strong foundation of social work practice skills, how to counsel, how to assess. Um, we teach different types of clinical theory and knowledge. But we also teach you two things that might be slightly different than some other programs. We teach a strong critical thinking skills so that you not only know uh, what you're doing and how to do it, but why you're doing it and what are the pros and cons of doing it. And then we're also interested in social responsibility, producing students that are good citizens. Our BSW model that we've developed is passionate, practical, prepared, and professional. We developed the model based on multiple meetings with community partners across Peterborough and Durham. It's important that we attract students who are passionate about social justice and making a positive change in the world. Practical, we want you to have the actual skills. What do I do when a person's sitting in front of me? How do I help? Prepared, to have the knowledge and skill base so that you don't feel out of depth when you're actually working with service users and professional, that we have an ethical um, and professional standards that we have to maintain and uphold. Just talk to you very briefly about our department. I am the director and my training and research is in social work education. I was also a clinician for over 15 years. We also have a field coordinator, Dr. Catherine Dill. And we have a tenure track faculty in Durham, Dr. Tara LaRose. We also have two admin staff. And if you're uh, asking questions about social work or you're contacting us through the website or calling us, you'll run into our uh, admin folks a lot. They are really our frontline folks. Um, Ms. Lee Dowdy is our admin uh, department secretary. And then we also have Ms. Deborah, who's our academic advisor. Um, our BSW program is a four-year program and an honors degree where you would earn 20 credits towards your degree. The first two years might be what you call pre-social work, almost like pre-med, where you're required to take four specific courses in introduction to social work as well as foundations uh, of social work. And the difference is the first year courses are really general information courses. What is social work? What is social welfare? The second year, the courses that you need to take will be related to, are you the right person for the profession? Is the profession right for you? So, so suitability questions and self-reflection because social work's an exciting but demanding profession. Um, so students all take the same courses and then they compete for limited seats in third and fourth year. And I'll talk about bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. Um, 
if you are successful in being admitted into uh, the third year, which the third and fourth years we call the professional years, they are only offered at this time on a full-time basis. Um, and you will, it's a very exciting time because the first two years are just really more exploration of yourself and the profession. But in third and fourth year, you will be taking 90% of your courses will be applied social work courses where you actually learn the skills you need to do to do interviewing, counseling, assessment, and intervention. Uh, we have some really exciting courses, um, things such as feminist informed trauma practice, leadership, uh, and anti oppressive child welfare. Um, and you will get two supervised placements um, with a total of 700 hours where you will be able to go out and actually work with real people in real situations. Several students have had questions about our accreditation status, and I just wanted to let you know that we've successfully achieved pre accreditation. Um, in the spring, this spring, and what that means is, you when you graduate, uh, when you graduate from the BSW, it is considered uh, uh, an accredited degree, and therefore you can work in anywhere in the profession. Um, in terms of applying from high school, uh, you certainly can do that. Uh, you need a minimum of six grade 12 for you or 4M courses, a minimum of a 70% average overall. And you need English for you uh, with a minimum grade of 60%. And if you meet those criteria, anybody can take our Social Work 1000 and Social Work 1001 courses as well. They're not sequential. You don't have to take one uh, before the other. And they're also both offered online every summer. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the requirements you can see on the screen. Um, I won't go into detail. Um, if you have questions about the specifics of the credits you have to earn, you can contact a Trent Academic Advisor or Ms. Deb Earl from our department and you can get her contact information on the website. Um, one thing to notice that's really important is that not everybody will be successful getting into the professional years. We have 60 spaces total, 30 in Durham campus, and 30 at Peterborough. So it's very important that whatever you do, you plan for an alternative in case you're not successful. So you'll notice that many people will take uh, credits and electives from things like sociology, psychology, uh, the humanities and social science. Um, just this is a very uh, brief uh, video that's offered on our website. If you check Trent Social Work website, um, one of our students speaks about her experience in the program. The professional years, what you see here is an outline of all the courses you would be required to take. The required courses are in kind of the pale green. So you see some really interesting courses. We are one of the only schools in Canada that offer a required social work and indigenous perspectives course, which is very interesting because our accrediting body nationally has now uh, made a recommendation that all schools have this as required course. Uh, you'll learn how to do research. You'll talk a lot about uh, diversity and respect for others. Um, and you can see the various courses there. In the kind of the second shade of green, the second uh, darker green, you'll see the field placement. You'll have over 700 hours, uh, 300 hours in your third year, and 400 hours of placement in your fourth year. And the dark green um, are spaces for electives. So you might want to uh, take electives from other uh, disciplines, which is nice if you have a, sp a particular interest in a certain area. Um, the electives that we have planned that are very interesting are uh, queering social work, aging, looking at addictions and recovery, family practice, and anti-oppressive child welfare. Uh, so really interesting courses. These We haven't made a decision yet, but these may be open to any student at, uh, at Trent to take for interest. So... Um, just to highlight some really interesting courses that you may not find in other social work programs in Canada are social work and leadership, feminist informed trauma practice, because many of the people we work with have experiences of trauma, and anti-oppressive child welfare. Um, and then I've talked a little bit already about the electives that are available, and they'll be available on a rotating basis. They won't be offered every year, but our hope is that over your third and fourth year, you'd have an opportunity to take each one. 
if you are successfully accepted in the professional years, and there is a competition, uh, we offer both uh, on both campuses, you can take your first and second year courses. Um, the same program is offered on both campuses. And you compete in a common pool. And how you compete is you have to apply with an essay about why you would make a suitable uh, social worker, why we should pick you in essence. And 50% um, of uh, your competition mark would be based on your essay. And the other 50% would be based on your grade average. So it's very important that you study hard and that you work hard to be a stronger student. Uh, you compete into this pool and 60 people are selected and assign their campus. The people with the top scores in the competition uh, get first choice of uh, where they want to be, either Peterborough or Durham. If you take a field, when you take your field placement in third and fourth year, um, you will, a uh, placement can be up to an hour from your assigned campus. So if you live in Whitby uh, and you were going to the Durham campus, you could do a placement in Whitby or Pickering, for example, and possibly Toronto. Um, and if you live in, for example, Lindsay, uh, you might be able to do the placement in Lindsay and be uh, studying at the Peterborough campus. Uh, third year placements are run from January to April, three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And fourth year placements run a whole eight months, September to April, two days a week. And the idea is to give you lots of hands-on experience with direct supervision. And, and in fourth year, it's kind of exciting because by the fourth year, you're strong enough, you're skilled enough that you may even get your own service user caseload. You may be able to start and run your own groups. You may be able to do research. You could work on social policy. There's lots of exciting opportunities. The goal is to give you very, two very different placements. So if you come in and you say, I just want to work with youth, we will do everything we can to give you one placement in that area. But we will also invite you to uh, explore another type of social work in your, other, in your second placement. Some examples of field placements um, that we're going to offer are things like children's aid or child protection, mental health, sexual assault centers, family resources, community counseling, social services, etc. We have confirmed 180 placements uh, total in the Durham and Peterborough region. Many of you may have questions about transfer pathways. Um, if you apply as a transfer student, um, Academic advisors in the Office of the Registrar will consider your transcript and let you know what courses and what credits you can be considered towards your degree. We have specific articulation agreements with three colleges who have two-year social services diploma degree. And if you happen to be in one of those colleges, you're likely to be able to earn enough credits to come directly into our second year. You will not, and no student will be able to go immediately to a third year. We will have all students attend the two social work required courses in second year. For the reasons we talked about a little earlier, that um, the second year is really finding out if you're suitable and a match for the profession and to do some self-reflection uh, about those issues. Uh, transfer credits are assessed once you apply, and so then you can request. One of the things that's interesting is if you come from a two-year social services diploma degree, you may be able to get an exemption or a waiver for third-year placement, uh, which will lighten your load in third year, and you may only have to do the fourth-year field placement. Um, and a typical college program of two-year social services diploma can often earn up to five credits, five transfer credits. But again, our Trent Academic Advisors would be happy to help you sort this out. Um, just uh, this speaks to uh, the transfer pathways I talked about. We have agreements with Fleming Loyalist and Durham College. Um, if you have graduated from those um, colleges, you have a minimum average of 75%. You will definitely be granted six transfer credits towards the completion of the 20 credit degree. And I think uh, my understanding, if I recall, is that this, you know, would have had to have graduated in the last five years from those colleges um, to qualify for those credits. Um, and then more pathways are currently being on, are, are under development. It really is our wish that if you come from a social services diploma, that we'll do what we can um, to allow you to get credit for that teaching. 
Uh, we're also in partnership with Indigenous colleges across Ontario, um, looking at social services diplomas. If you want to be considered for transfer credits, you have to have a minimum grade of 60% um, for any university course to be considered for trans transfer credits. So um, you need to uh, be careful about your marks per course in order to get the transfer. I just want to talk a little bit more about admissions. Um, we have lots of questions about that. So I said a bit earlier that it's 50% your grades across all your courses. Plus, you have to have 70, at least a 70, in your four introduction social work courses in order to apply and compete for the program. And it's 50% an online supplemental application. And in that application, I did talk about you discussing um, writing an essay about why we should select you. But we also ask you in that supplemental application to list your work experience, your volunteer experiences, and your personal experiences. We get lots of questions about, do I have to volunteer? Do I have to, what if I work too much? Or uh, what if I only have volunteer and I don't have work uh, experience? We're not really interested in a, kind of a checklist of the right kind of experiences. We're more interested in seeing if you have an interest in the human condition, if you have interest in working with people, if you have any experience or passion in social action, social justice. But we're also interested in how you can explain um, how your experiences have relevance um, for your social work career. So for example, we might have somebody who has been a caregiver at home with small children for 15 years and uh, might worry about no time for volunteer work. But uh, uh, you'll appreciate this, Jennifer. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say that you know if you were a domestic goddess for 15 years, <laughs> you can actually talk about all of the skills organizationally, management-wise, administrative-wise, and dealing with people that are part of being a caregiver for two small children, for example. Um, again, uh, people will compete in one applicant pool. All the applications go into one competition and there's 30 spaces available per campus. And we've highlighted the link where you can uh, find out more about the BSW Professional Years Admissions Package and how to apply. But we, we don't leave students uh, without kind of advice on this. We will work very closely with you in your first and second year. One. To, to talk to you about whether social work is right for you, two, to help you plan an alternative if social work isn't right or you're not successful in getting in the third year, but also how can you position yourself uh, to compete um, for admissions. Um, again, uh, you need a minimum of 70% in each of the four, year, uh, four intro courses. You have to have completed all of the generalist course requirements for years one and two that were in a chart earlier. You have to have a minimum of a 70% cumulative average on your best 10 credits coming into your third year. So some people are applying with an actual university degree where they have 20 credits and, and maybe some of them are strong and some of them aren't as strong. We actually will take your best credits. Um, and needless to say, since 50% of your competition mark is based on your grades, if you're a stronger student, you have a better option or better chance of um, getting not only into the program, but getting your choice of campus. Um, and we, every year, we're going to have that admissions um, application process start uh, that is due March 1st. Uh, and so students are normally notified by sometime in May or early June about whether they're accepted into the program. One of the things that we're really interested in is not only working in partnership with the community, but also developing a sense of student life and, and having student events. We, if you look at this picture, uh, purple is our, our department color. Uh, it represents stopping violence against women and children. We will have uh, our graduating hoods will have a purple, uh, purple uh, stripe. Um, and we, we, students get together and they raise money. And one of the things they do is sell social work items like sweatshirts and hoodies and pants and that. So you'll see a fun event here where we work together on what we call five feminist minutes. It's a fun coffee house we do. 
uh, every March. Uh, we celebrate International Social Work Week every March, and we do multiple events. Our students are involved in uh, uh, being involved in organizing and marching in pride parades. They volunteer at food banks. Um, they do fundraising uh, for shelters. Uh, they also have fun events. I know that they've done karaoke and they've done bowling together and that type of thing. So there are two student so associations that are social work associations, both in Durham and Peterborough. And um, they do a lot of uh, activities across the year. And as a program, we try to plan at least two social work activities one of those being a career panel and an admissions panel that we try to offer uh, in first or second year. And we also make sure that you're aware of volunteer opportunities to strengthen your applications. So we post volunteer applications on a continuing basis uh, on our website. So just check our website under student and community life to find out a bit more about that. Oh, and just to add that our associations um, there is democratic governance in these associations and we will have student reps in third and fourth year uh, be part of our departmental governance. They will be elected to sit on our faculty committees and be very involved in discussion and decision making about the program as we grow. Here's just some more pictures of various students that have been involved in our program. We're really uh, happy to say that our students are very passionate and enjoy um, doing activities that support the community. We've done a lot of Indigenous uh, awareness events. We've had guest speakers in from the Occupy uh, movement as well as the Idle No More movement and also we've done several events and had um, speakers, guest lecturers in our class on the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Uh, it's really important to us that we look at raising awareness about marginalized populations and people who suffer in Canada in an unequal society. And so we try to make sure that we have guest lecturers coming into various courses across our program. If you have any questions about the program, we're happy to answer them, not only today where you can type in questions, but you can send an email to our departmental address and we will respond as quickly as we can. You can contact Ms. Deb Earle for academic advising. She specifically takes a look at people's plans, their academic credits, etc. Or you can drop by. We have an open door policy, uh, a little quieter in the summer, of course. Uh, but we're at Lady, we're in Lady Eaton College, um, the North Side, Office 124. Uh, we're there uh, nine to four, Monday to Friday, most weeks. Uh, you can always email us to set up an appointment. And um, I have a quote on here that's really important and speaks to our vision and our passion for the program. We really want to. Uh, graduate students who are dedicated and passionate global citizens. So I have a quote there, of, be the change you wish to see in the world. And that's really what we want to do in social work. We're not only producing skilled grads who can work in a profession, but we're really uh, looking at people who are very interested in making social change. So now we'll have time for you to ask questions and type in questions and we'll respond to them as uh, soon as we can here. All right, great. So uh, you guys have been great typing in your questions um, for us to read out. So um, some of the questions I'm going to ask um, Dr. Hillux, some of the questions um, I think I might be better sure. able to answer. They seem to fall under a little bit of under my purview. So um, <laughs> one of the first questions we got was from Daniel and he was wondering about specifically a hospital setting in the Durham region for a placement. Would that be something that's possible? Um, we're looking at several healthcare agencies um, it depends on how you define hospital social work. Um, several healthcare agencies are part of our confirmed placements. Hospitals generally uh, only take uh, MSW Masters of Social Work students, but we are actually trying to work in partnership with multiple hospitals in the area to, uh, to um, convince them, persuade them that our BSW students would be excellent additions to their teams. So yes, healthcare in general, I can't, we can't guarantee that you would be in Durham Hospital, for example. Um, okay, great. 
And then we've had a couple of questions about specifically course selection. When does that happen? How does that happen? All of that kind of fun stuff. And that's more me. Um, so you will all be getting invitations to um, student orientations coming up over the next little bit. Um, if you're at the Durham campus, you'll get one specifically for the Durham campus. And if you're at the Peterborough campus, we have a couple of different dates coming up um, where you'll get invited to campus and we can show you um, how to register for courses and do all of that kind of fun stuff. So that actually gets done by our orientation team. So there's no need to worry. We will show you how to register for courses, what to do, how to pick your courses, all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, in terms of uh, when that will happen, um, our course registration starts at the end of June for first year students. So you've still got some time. There's no need to worry about that. And if you want to look at what some of the courses um, are required. So there's the first two half credits in mm -hmm. social work that are required in your first year. And then Social Work outlines a number of courses, so typically first year intro courses that you could be taking from a number of different specified areas like first year Indigenous studies, first year women and gender studies, first year psychology. So you get some choice in the kind of grouping of first year courses that you should be taking. And that's all outlined in the academic calendar. We'll post that on the chat, um, but it is trentu.ca slash calendar. Super easy document to find. All right, another question. Um, let me see. Oh, we were talking about this earlier. Can you do a study abroad in social work? So this student specifically asked for second year, but. Okay, so my understanding is certainly as a trans student, you're welcome to, in the summer, go abroad to uh, various places and take courses. And Jennifer, you'd probably speak, you can mm -hmm. probably speak to that more than I can. But the actual social work courses, with the exception of our two online summer courses, um, have to be taken in person at either Durham or Peterborough campus. Great, yeah. And so that's because when um, Dr. Hillock was developing the program, it's developed very specifically to Trent to the way we're going to develop our program. So really nowhere else anywhere is going to offer an equivalent course. Um, now it is certainly possible that if you were to take say the second year social work course in the summer, you might be able to find equivalent courses at another university for say like a psychology or for um, um, a women and gender studies. So in your second year before you get to those professional years, it is, it is certainly something that's not out of the realm of possibility, but you'll certainly wanna chat with the department, with the international program more in terms of your options of studying abroad, either in the summer for a semester. That's and just a, a, a slight correction, you had said oh, the yeah. second year courses in the summer. Our oh, right. second year yes. courses are not online, only our 1,000 and 1,000. Right. Sorry about that. But certainly if you want to study abroad and do your electives, Mm -hmm. as or part of your 20 credits for university, you can certainly consider that. Great, awesome. Um, now I'm sure a question that you get often, um, so Dakota has asked, what happens if you're not accepted into the professional years? That's why we do a lot of supporting and direct one-on-one -on -one work with students and so do our academic advisors across Trent related to you have to have a really good sense of an alternative. And most people have that. So for example, Jennifer mentioned social psych, women's studies, indigenous studies. Uh, those tend to be uh, where our students congregate. So students, for example, will take our four, some people take our four social work courses just for fun and they can be fourth year nursing students. But most students take our four years uh, courses, try to compete to get into admissions, but also think about, I'm going to take the rest of my courses in psychology because I know I'm going to go to psychology if I don't get in, or I'm, I'm going to make a plan. So we're really careful about making sure that every student has a plan that's viable for them if they don't get in. Great. Okay. So a couple of questions. Um, Jaden's asked a really good question. Um, so sometimes universities can be really confusing until you understand how we work. So Jaden has asked, do two H courses from any field make up one credit? Uh, your math is excellent. <laughs> they do. H stands for half. So two H credits are actually two half credits. So they do make up the one credit. Um, and they, uh, they don't necessarily need to be from the same course, although sometimes it may specify that um, you need to have one full credit in one specific field. And in that case, your two half credits would have to be from the same field. Um, the next question. Oh, um, can I, can oh, I just yeah. add, and particularly if you're going to be a social psych major, what we've run into is students often have to take that uh, a full year social, full mm -hmm, year of psych yeah. in their first year in order to be eligible to take second year psych or social. So certainly if you're planning your alternative, you need to speak 
to those departments specifically to make sure that you have the prerequisites to take second year courses in another discipline. Yeah, great. Um, next question. How many people are admitted into the generalist years? There is no um, ceiling or maximum. We have over 1,200 students in our first and second year courses. They're massive. They're yeah. quite big. First year in particular because so many people just find introduction to social work and introduction to social welfare interesting. Yeah. Uh, the second year narrows down a little bit, um, about 100 to 150 students. And the classrooms, first and second year, are bigger in – Peterborough than they are in Durham just because of um, you know the different amount of students registering for those courses so there is no limit um, anybody can take the first years and the people who get their 70 in each of their first year social work courses can take the second year social work courses yeah and um, to give you kind of a perspective um, so though there might be you said 1200 students in the first year actually at Trent at either campus we don't have a room of 1200 people no. um, our largest room is about 380 people um, and so that's kind of your your max capacity on a let's sit in class together type basis so the lecture can be run a couple times and, and that type of thing send one at the the durham campus and yeah, yeah. we haven't we haven't had to do that but i have to say our first year in peterborough this year was about 351 people so yeah. we are stretching the max yeah we're not sure what happens if we get 400 how, okay. how we're gonna yeah, yeah. That, but it's a, it's not a bad thing that people like the courses yeah um, okay, so Ashley's asked, um, she wants to focus on working with Indigenous um, people. So are there any placements in Peterborough or the Durham area for this? We have strong, uh, we've built strong community partnerships with uh, several of the Indigenous communities and we have arranged placements, uh, in particular in Peterborough, Alderville and uh Curve Lake are very strong partners. In fact, we have two field advisory uh, committees where we have Indigenous representation on both. We also, as I mentioned, uh, we are one of the only schools in Canada that require social work students to take the social work and Indigenous course as a, as a requirement to graduate. So absolutely. We also um, have partnerships and placements, both in Durham and Peterborough, in organizations that would describe themselves as, as providing service to Indigenous populations. Great. Um, Cynthia has asked, if you're not accepted into the professional years and you're studying at the Peterborough campus, could you transfer to the Durham campus and take child and youth studies? Um, that definitely. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know enough about the child news studies, but you can certainly transfer, I think, back and forth. Some people can take courses on both campuses, though I know they, they need to be assigned to one particular campus. But I think it's open, but I'm not sure about laddering into the yeah. child news. Yeah, you'd have to check about the requirements and that type of thing and what year you'd be going into. But certainly um, it's free travel between, uh, well, not, not free travel. Um, you can free roam between each campus. You have to get yourself there and, and that type of thing. But, but certainly once yeah. you're a Trent student, you're a Trent student and you can take courses at either campus. Um, Alana has popped in a little bit late and she's wondering what the heck are these professional years that we're talking about? Do you want to do a quick summary again? Sure. Um, our BSW program is a four-year program. The first two you might consider like pre-social work, like pre-med. Um, the first year are two courses that just talk a little bit generally about what social work and social welfare is, what they are. And then the second year, it's really about uh, looking at yourself and figuring out if the profession is suitable for you and if you're suitable for the profession. Um, and after these kind of two years of foundational courses, you compete to get into the, I, I would guess, call the applied social work courses where you actually learn how to be a social worker. You learn skills, you practice with real human beings, you go out and work in the field, in field placements. And so it's a very, it's a big shift from general kind of uh, what we call survey courses that talk a little bit about knowledge to very detailed supervised applied skills and knowledge in the classroom in seminars and in the field placements that you're required to do. Great um, and Gemma you've asked about um, some transfer courses coming over from college um, and because we don't have your specific documents and all of that kind of stuff um, probably your best response is to email admissions at trentu.ca and they can actually look into why or why not you have or haven't gotten a transfer credit um, so yeah that's a little bit more a little bit more than what we can can handle right now um, but yeah definitely check that um, check that out and um, they would be more than happy to help you and look into your file. 
Um, okay, so uh, I had some other questions that I thought um, might be interesting or, or having been in university, maybe some things that I would have liked to have known. Um, so uh, Susan, can you chat about how many hours would you recommend a student spend outside of the classroom working on schoolwork? Well, this is interesting. So um, the average that we expect are almost three hours per class okay. per week. So if yeah. you're taking a full load of five half courses, um, in social work, our courses, for example, are three hour courses. So that's in the third year, fourth year, 15 hours. You would be expected to probably do a total of about 40 to 45 hours a week mm -hmm. because our program is full time. And so you really have to think about that and your other commitments. Um, you need to be prepared and ready uh, to put that kind of work into the program. Great. Um, and then, so I mean, when I was a student, I viewed school as a full-time job. Yeah. That's what you recommend. It's, yeah. I mean, it's your full-time job. It's, it's what your focus is going to be on. Yeah. Uh, speaking of jobs, um, what types of careers or jobs can social workers go into um, beyond, say, maybe the very typical clinician or, or what people think about? Sure. Um, so what's really uh, exciting about social work and why so many students are coming into our program is social work is one of those jobs that are in high demand in Canada. The labor market um, analysis that we've looked at show really a lot of demand for social workers for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, a lot of uh, agencies, for example, that used to hire um, people from other degrees or with college diplomas are now insisting that there's a BSW credential to work in the field. So lots of jobs, uh, really good outlook for jobs. It's also one of the few um, university degrees you can take that you that prepares you to uh, go right into a frontline job mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe having to take uh, graduate school yeah. or PhD. And, um, and in terms of careers, there's absolutely everything. I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about my background. Mm -hmm. I've worked in hospitals and even in the hospitals, uh, there's multiple uh, kind of challenges. I've worked in emergency, I've worked in palliative care, I've worked in oncology, I've worked in physical and mental rehab, I've worked in psychiatry, I've worked at pediatrics. Um, so multiple floors just in a hospital. I uh, was a, I worked with the RCMP. I worked in the super maximum prison um, which was serial murderers. That was wow. really interesting. Um, I've worked in child protection. I've worked uh, with high-risk youth um, with the federal government. So there's everything. There's there's work with... Here's a really interesting. Do yeah. you know some, some a company in uh, Canada that hires social work on a regular basis is Cirque du Soleil. Really? They do international work. They hire social workers because the original founders in Quebec, um, one of them was either a social worker or related to social work. They actually do international community development work and they hire social workers to go overseas and work with uh, rural communities in developing countries um, to do uh, kind of resource and support development of uh, rural communities, which I think is fascinating. There's work in the environmental movement. There's yeah. work in labor um, and activism, social okay. activism. Them, but also all of the you know counseling, individual and family counseling that you would see, and and what you probably picture, child protection and working in uh, shelters to help women who've been um, abused or assaulted, um, working at food banks, those kind of jobs as well. Yeah, great. That's really enlightening. Yeah, Cirque du Soleil. Who knew? Cirque du Soleil. I think that's fascinating. If I was twenty again, that's where I'd yeah. be applying. Telling your parents you're running away to the circus. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so Daniel has asked, um, do we know how many students will be attending the Durham campus for social work in September? Do you have an idea? Uh, I know exactly oh, for, okay. for third year. Okay. Um, this year uh, we had a limited kind of admissions because uh, of it being a new program. We have 30 students going into third year in Peterborough and only 12 in Durham. Okay. That is an exceptional uh, kind of circumstance. Uh, we expect that there'll be more students in seats in, in continuing years. In Durham, we expect for our first year somewhere around 100 to 150 students okay. in each class. Second year is more like about 50 to 75 in okay. Durham. 
Great. And then um, someone else has asked, um, how big are the classroom sizes in Durham? Um, so at our Durham campus, and our Durham campus is about 800 students in total. So I believe the largest classroom is about 150. And then you've got classes that are 50, 25, that type of thing. So they're very, very manageable um, class sizes there. Um, okay, we've got another, oh, and the, just as we're talking about it, um, the average class size in Peterborough, so our largest lecture hall is about 380 people. Your classes can go down to, um, you know, 150, 150, that type of thing. So we, again, have a range of classroom sizes. As a student, I had anywhere from the 380 down to about a class of about 25 in my, in my degree. So yeah, and if you yeah. think of social work, the first year is just so broad and open as a, a, a area of interest for anyone. We have massive interest in that course, but not, uh, I'd say only about 20% of that, uh, of a course of 350 or a course of 150 that want to actually become social workers. And so the classes get significantly small in the second year, and we guarantee that they're going to be small in your third and fourth years because they're only going to we're only going to accept 30 people and that's because we have to teach you how to be a counselor we have to teach you counseling techniques and you can't do that in class of 300 you, you have to do it in small groups and uh, that's why there's such a strong emphasis on practical skills in the third and fourth year yeah uh, okay so another question uh, what's the hardest part of being a social worker I think it's self-care um, I have been a social worker uh, for over 28 years, 30 years, I think now, over 30 years. And I have worked, I uh, I should probably shouldn't say this, but I've, uh, I've been shot at, testified against a serial murderer. I've seen some really devastating things. I've worked with really serious cases. And it certainly gives you pause about humanity. And there's you have to deal with that stressful kind of first responder uh, experience a lot so you have to uh, and that's part of it but it's also challenging and creative and um, exciting I've never been bored um, I've had people thank me 20 years later for making a difference in their life when I thought maybe I had no impact um, so self-care being able to balance caring and connection with people and passion and engagement with surviving and and having really healthy boundaries a lot of our students who are attracted to the profession just like psychology students often come from uh, family experiences where maybe they've had trauma or maybe they've been um, they've been a survivor of, of abuse or they've They've struggled with poverty and they can be quite passionate but I always talk about in second year in particular that we really have to have a really strong sense of well-being and and really look after ourselves and be prepared to have strong positive uh, mental health because if we're wounded and we don't kind of do that work um, if we don't look at our own healing and our own boundaries and our wellness then we're not in the best position to help others and uh, so we do second year is really some people find it quite triggering um, uh, there's a whole debate about trigger warnings and I, I tease that we'd have to have a trigger warning every lecture every class for four years because social work isn't just about working with others it's about working with yourself and what you contribute and what you bring to the table in a therapeutic relationship and so we you know uh, there's a, a uh, medicals uh, quote called physician heal thyself while well, social workers have to have to be healthy uh, in order to be good practitioners that's a lot of really good insight into that thanks yeah years of experience years years, years and yeah. we're not, none of us are perfect yeah so, social work students sometimes get confused and think we expect perfection mm -hmm. what we expect is awareness uh, so we all you know we all have wounds we all have issues we all have triggers I tease if we ever find a functional family, we'll cage them and study. I mean, we've always, yeah. we all come from various backgrounds with strengths and wounds. Um, and it's just self awareness and making sure that our woundedness or our own issues don't negatively impact the service users we work with. Great. Um, okay, so it seems like the questions have calmed down um, just a little bit. I'll give you um, maybe a last call out if you have any other questions that you're looking for us to chat about today. Um, so I think we're good. 
Yeah. All right. So if you do have any further questions, you can always connect with us um, at the university. So you can reach us at um, the liaison, which is kind of our home base um, email address, which is liaison at trentu.ca. That is L-I-A-I-S-O-N at trentu.ca. Any questions that you have, be it about social work, about applying for residence, anything like that, um, you can ask us and we can get you the answer or get you to the right place. Um, so as we're winding down, I'm just going to tell you about a couple of things um, that you'll want to be thinking about, um, some opportunities for the summer, that type of thing. So we are doing campus tours um, Monday through Saturday, pretty much all throughout the summer. So you can go to trentu.ca slash tours to sign up for a campus tour. Um, for students living um, or looking to live at either campus, the residence deadlines are coming up soon, um, the beginning of June. So you'll want to check with your um, respective campus on when those deadlines are, but you want to get applying to residents soon because in pretty much the next two weeks that guarantee goes away. Uh, like we chatted about earlier with um, registering for courses and all of that kind of stuff, new student orientation or summer orientation is coming up. You will be getting an email about all of those things so um, check all of that out. Um, and though it won't be Susan visiting uh, with us in the next ones, we do have a couple more webinars coming up in the next couple of days. Um, oops, have we lost feed? Nope, we haven't. We're still good. Okay, so moving on, the more webinars that we have coming up. So we've got Varsity Athletics coming up on May 25th, um, questions about joint majors coming up on May 26th, and um, a financial aid and OSAP coming up on May 31st. So if you would like to check out those, um, we will also be sending out information um, there as well, or you can search webinars on our website and you'll come to our registration page. So I think that that is... I think that's good. Thank you so much for coming. It's been great. Oh, I've been told we've got maybe more questions. Oh. Let's go check this out again. I was just going to add that uh, we certainly, I mean it when we have an open door policy, come drop in, come and see us. Um, mm -hmm. Someone will be available to answer your question. Uh, feel free to email us. We're happy to speak to each of you about whatever questions you have about the program. Sure. Okay. This is actually a really interesting question. Um, so maybe we're talking about kind of the hands-on training that a student would get. But Alana's asked, uh, when you talked about working um, from a first re first responder standpoint, so that um, from what I understand is like the first person at a scene or, or that or, type of or thing. one of the few first people. Yeah. So um, do you get training in those certain situations? So do we provide training? We actually, again, this is where our program is one of the leading programs in Canada because we actually require students to take two very important trainings. One is nonviolent crisis intervention, mm -hmm. and the other is suicide assist, um, doing assessment and intervention with people who are suicidal. And again, we just received uh, information from the Ontario government that they're making recommendations that all schools in Ontario have this training, and we're always we're already ahead of the curve. So we do that. To of training but you don't graduate with bsw usually and go right into that kind of situation you graduate from a bsw and even if you go into child protection they will train you uh, they will give you an orientation they will provide you with specific skills so when i started i had a bsw and i went into child protection right away which mm -hmm. was very tough but i received weeks and weeks of orientation and training i worked in partnership mm -hmm. i had a lot of uh, mentorship before they ever sent me out alone on a call and often you're not alone you you may have an rcmp officer with you you may have uh, a team with you so um don't be too worried that you're going to be thrown immediately into that situation and that's another reason why hospitals often require an msw just because of the yeah. seriousness of some of the issues that you might run into in an emergency department okay or in a psychiatric unit. All right. Um, this is a really great question. What's some advice you can give first year students? Do your readings. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing to me mm -hmm. how many students are passionate about getting in social work and don't read. Yeah. And I know it's hard. I, I have four university degrees. I've read a lot <laughs> of things and I've had to read and you do have to sometimes select. Do your readings come to class? If you don't come to class, you miss the flavor, the coloring, yeah. the themes, the stories. You might be able to study a book. You might be able to mm -hmm. uh, get PowerPoints and study those, but you don't get the richness of getting to know the stories and what this profession's really about. So come mm -hmm. to class, even if it kills you, yeah. and do your readings. And keep up on your assignments. Um, I think that's most important for success.
Yeah, again, I kind of, for me, when I was a student, I always like hearkened it back to, um, this was my full-time job. This was what I was doing. I, my part of my job was to read, was to go to class. Going to class is like three hours of free studying. Like yeah. you just sit there and by osmosis, someone just tells you information and you get to take it in. What also worked for me is I think when I was a student, I did the math and each class that I missed was like $80 I threw away. So it's like, not to say it, but education is no longer free when you get to university. Yeah. I could do a lot of cool things with $80. One of them was go to class, and that's what I was going to go do. So, yeah. yeah. A lot of people experience our social work classrooms as very different uh, than the other classes. We're very interactive. Mm -hmm. um, I remember last year and the year before talking to students, and they're like, what? You expect me to ask a question in class? You, you expect me to answer a question? I have two daughters, um, one who just finished a university degree and one who's doing a trench degree. And she says sometimes she sits in class and no one ever asks a question. Yeah. That's not really what social work classrooms yeah, yeah. are like. And some students love the interaction and they love the storytelling. And others, other students are like, what? Don't call on me. I don't want to speak. So we're much more interactive. Uh, even if we're in a class of 361 uh, or 350 or 150, we do a lot of dialogue with students in the class. Yeah. Um, okay. Some more questions. Um, so, and this would be general kind of Trent questions. Um, so many of our students do commute. They do come from um, close distance, far distance, that type of thing. Um, I think as a university, I think we can both speak as university representatives, your safety far none is the most important thing to us. If you don't feel safe traveling to the university because it is snowing and raining and cats and dogs and everything is horrible and you don't want to go outside, your safety is 100% the most important thing. Um, you should contact your professors if for whatever reason, if you can't get out of bed because you've got the worst cold you've ever had, contact your professor, let them know. Um, you can see Dr. Herlock is, is she's not an ogre. She's a lovely, lovely woman. Um, so just make sure that you're communicating with people. So if you can't come to a class for um, a weather related reason, get in contact with them, let them know. Yeah, and one of the things I talked about earlier were professional ethics and standards, and we asked social work students to, in their four years of courses with us, to demonstrate professional behavior. And if you miss a class or you're going to miss a class, then you do like you would in a job. You contact the person, you inform them in advance or as soon as you can, and you use professional behavior at all times. And, and that's what our expectation around uh, absence is. And, and in field placement, you would do the same thing. Just like a job, you would contact the agency and let them know that for some reason you can't make it in. Um, social workers tend to have an understanding that life happens. So mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're professional uh, about it, I'm sure uh, that's fine. Um, and most homework now gets submitted online, eh? Um, it's really the faculty's choice. Okay. So I'm a big proponent in my teaching. Uh, we have something called Safe Assign. Okay. I ask, it's a policy in the social work department for all students to submit to what's called Safe Assign to check for plagiarism. Uh, you have to be very careful that you learn how to cite properly. Uh, we have had some issues with students who haven't cited properly, mm -hmm. and it's, it's quite a serious uh, issue. Um, so most of our assignments mm -hmm. come in and are uh, go to what's called Blackboard, which is our our uh, support, our IT support uh, um, platform, and we check all assignments for plagiarism before we mark them. But it really is up to individual faculty. So okay. sometimes you still have to hand things in on paper. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that would be the same thing if you, if it were snowy and horrible and you needed to hand something in. I would email it off to the professor and say, I'm not going to make it. Here is my, my copy to show you that it's all done. I will give you the hard copy if that's what you require yeah. the next time I see you. So Yeah, a lot of students do that to make sure, because we usually have, uh, you usually lose marks if you're late at 5% a day in social work. So uh, students are often in, you know, very worried that they're going to lose 5%. So they, they're in contact and they say, I know you need it as soon as possible, but here's the online version. I just want to confirm I got it in on time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think we're good for questions now. We haven't had any in a couple of minutes. Now, don't worry, you can always ask us questions just because we're gonna be off the air. Again, that liaison website, um, our liaison email address is a great place to ask. We can help answer any of the questions you have. Um, so don't hesitate to, to contact us there. Um, so again, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I hope you had a good time. It was fun, yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys had a good time. Um, I have fun, I always have fun. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for coming and check out our webinars in the future and uh, have a great day. It's lovely outside. Okay, thanks. Yeah. See you later. Bye.